fine. Whoops. Okay, so I haven't actually started this vlog. <laughs> I also haven't filmed since July and it's currently August 24th so I'm sorry if this ends up being really really awkward but I th should have inserted some clips from my travels do your introduction before you actually start explaining anything. Hello, my name is Alex and welcome to a reading vlog. I have never done a reading vlog on my channel before because I don't like vlogging around other people. I don't like filming around other people either. I don't know why vlogging is just so different in my brain that I just can't, I cannot, I don't know why. So whenever I'm in a house with someone else or like other people, I'm always like, eh, vlogging, no thank you. And I don't like vlogging outside of my house so it's like there's nothing much that I can vlog if that makes sense beyond one room which seems really boring except for that's all you're gonna get for these two freaking weeks because I'm currently on government quarantine in the UK. I should probably explain because a lot of you are probably like oh my god why are you traveling during COVID you shouldn't be traveling like yes I'm aware I had to come back for university okay I needed to be in the same time zone doing classes at two in the morning does not sound appealing to me and I would really, really like to be in the same time zone as my classes and my friends and all that stuff. So I'm back. That's why I'm here. I haven't slept in a while. I mean, I took some naps, but like, I don't know if any of you guys have flown either frequently or infrequently across the Atlantic, but it's a struggle because if you go from the US or like North America to Europe or the UK, or like I was going from the US to UK, but you know, generalizations it's a struggle because you've basically gone for like 24 hours my flight took off in seattle at 9 45 and i got into the uk at 8 their time so like it wasn't 24 hours because time zones and all that stuff like it wasn't actually 24 hours for me but let me tell you it felt like 24 hours man I didn't get to sleep on the plane only for like two or three hours and then I keep wobbling. Sorry if I wobble the table. This table is super scary, sketchy. I meant to sort of film this update how many hours ago when I got here at like 2.45, 3-ish and it is currently almost 8.20. And while you're probably like, oh, you must have been doing so many like important things no all i've done since then is order the groceries that i'm going to need for the next two weeks because i'm not supposed to leave this like apartment building i can like go to the front door and stuff because like food but i'm not really supposed to leave this room ish until september 7th we're gonna try this now because this is a looking a little sketch but like i needed food so it's all right. It's a burger. Anyway, like I said, this is going to be a reading vlog because I don't know if y'all have had to like government quarantine, but like I said, can't leave the building. So there's not much to do besides read. Oh, shoot. I was going to show you what I just finished on the plane, but it's in my little book stack that's making it my tripod, which is balanced very precariously on the edge of the table. So, you know, there's that. But while I was on the plane, I did finish The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, which I was reading for way too long. Just like, no thank you. Okay, yeah, this was a big one and it was a fantasy. So I was expecting like two, three days. And I took a pause in the middle to read other books. But one of the books I ended up DNFing, so it just sort of felt like I was wasting time the entire time. And I was like, no, I, no, I don't like this. I know. But I finally finished it. It was amazing. If you haven't read it, please read it because like, high quality. Why am I drinking water when I literally have a milkshake right here? So yeah, I finished that on the plane. I thought I was gonna cry. Not really, but kind of. I know that there's going to be a book too. It was very obvious and she even said in her dedication or not dedication acknowledgements that you know writing books and trilogies are is hard and first and even harder so like obviously this is gonna be like a trilogy or something like that but i think i've talked about this before where like i like books to have a full circle i guess like even if it's part of a trilogy or part of a series each book should be able to stand on their own plot wise a really good example of this i think is the throne of glass series by sarah j mass i know Throne of Glass. I don't talk about them very much. I think I've talked about this a little bit. I read them a really long time ago when I was younger. And like, I really loved them then. I'm not sure how I feel about them now, but I gotta give it to them. Their plots are excellent. Sarah J Mass is so good at coming up with a singular plot while creating an overarching plot for the whole series, which I really appreciate as a reader because I hate it when books are written just to make a series longer or something like that. That's not what this was, that's the thing. 
This book was amazing. I loved it. Solid. 10 out of 10. I shouldn't tug my mouth full. This book a lot, even though the plot in it was felt a little iffy. Not iffy as in it was made poorly, but iffy as in it didn't feel like a very concrete plot. This book dealt with a lot of world building and sort of character development and I actually really enjoyed those aspects of it and the fact that like they did that. When I went on that tangent about endings like that made you think that like I didn't like it but I did. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Amazing. I love the characters a lot. I love how diverse they are. I love how like most of the cast isn't, I don't want to say normal, but I guess I could say mainstream because most of them are some minority as in not cis, not het. None of them have disabilities, but also not white. They just like, they came from a really interesting mix of backgrounds. I realized I don't think I've ever written a book, or written, <laughs> I don't think I've ever written a book. No, I haven't. I think I've read one book before with an indigenous main character, and that was Percy Jackson, because Piper McLean is half Cherokee. It's hard to say that that one has like indigenous rep and like Cherokee rep and stuff, because like, I honestly don't know how much Rick Riordan really tried to emulate that. I guess like, I don't know, I just never think of it because I think that I a lot of times whitewash all the characters in my head because it's like in that series, Jason is very white and so is Annabeth and that's literally it. Like Percy is white, but he's described as like Mediterranean looking. You know, he looks like he's from like Greece or Southern Italy or something like that. Piper is Cherokee, Leo's Latina, Latin <laughs> Leo's Latinx, Frank is Chinese Canadian and Hazel is black. I think. So I think that I oftentimes forget that that cast is actually pretty diverse when it comes to ethnicity. But this book specifically, the character also talked a lot about her experiences as an indigenous person and as a queer person. She's a mate, like that character, okay, her name is Bronca. I keep calling her that character, but like that sounds weird. So like Bronca is like such an amazing character to read and like sort of see from the other character's eyes as well. Like it was just really great. I really liked her into that much depth because you guys are gonna see my thoughts in my wrap-up. I'm gonna make a July and August wrap-up but I mean you guys will need to see more thoughts in this because this is supposed to be a reading vlog so like hmm. I'm moving into my place the house that I'm sharing with a couple of my friends for uni on the 7th of September and I've gone back and forth about whether or not to do a moving vlog and the only reason I think I'm not going to is because like I said vlogging in front of other people is terrifying because like I just I, I don't like being questioned like if people wouldn't look at me weird and like wouldn't ask me what I was doing I'd be fine with it but the fact that people were like oh my god what are you doing and like I'd have to explain like no but I will do a room tour if that's something people want I don't know I don't know man I got a lot to think about. I had a lot to think about. This update is now 13 minutes long, probably because of my chewing, which felt like it took forever, even though it probably only took like five seconds. So get ready to see a lot more of these four-ish white walls. And I'm gonna finish eating, so. A little bit later and I realized I spent a lot of time talking about books that I'd already read and I didn't really get to talk about the books that I would like to read during these uh, two weeks. I'm not gonna like tell myself I have to read these books. I have a couple that I need to read for book clubs, but when I say a couple, I literally mean to. So not that bad. Firstly, the books that I kind of need to read are, oh no, the cover got bent. Traveling with hardcover books is sad. I always bend part of the cover and then it just doesn't look as pretty as it once did. Anyway, Girls Are Writ Thorn by Militia Bathory. Melissa Bashreduced. Like I said in my August TBR, I'm reading this for a book club with my friend Sasha over at Midnight Books. And I know this book has a ton of hype, so like, I'm excited, I guess. This isn't a TBR, I'm not gonna like be fancy about it. And then the other book that I need to finish for a book club is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Amezi. I started this one today. I'm only on page eight, so you know, like, not much. But I'm confused. I was literally confused two paragraphs in, and so I'm a little bit like, Maybe I should pick up something else first. Something like light and fun. I don't know. But yeah, I have to finish this one. And then this one's sort of a bonus, but I really want to reread it. That's the thing. That's why it's a bonus. It's a reread. And that's Felix Ever After. Set up straight. Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar, which I read at the beginning of June, and I'm reading for a book club this month. Like I said, I've already read it, so like I don't need to reread it, but it's here because I know that I've kind of been feeling like the cute contemporaries recently and so I kind of just like want to sit down and 
breeze through this book in a couple of hours because I know the story already. Also I miss I miss Felix so. And then some of the books that are either books I didn't finish in July that I meant to or books that I just really want to read right now. The first one that I didn't finish in July was The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. We had a whole reading plan let me tell you we had a whole reading plan was like a reasonable amount, like 200-ish pages a week. So it really wasn't that bad, but I fell so behind. So I'm only on page 316. So I still have this chunk to go. It's like 500 pages, I think, because this book is 800 pages total. And I am not really sure what to do because I haven't read it since the middle of July, but like I'm already 316 pages in. I don't really want to go back and reread it, but I want to finish it, but I like the story. But I don't know if I should reread it. I don't know. I'm struggling with this one, but it would be really nice to get it done because like it's just be nice. It's just be nice. The other book that I meant to read in July, this is why I didn't start at all, but I meant to read it in July, is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them, Jesus Christ, by not really sure how to say her name. I'm really sorry about that. I feel like I should have looked that up. And I think I did at one point, but anyway, and I was supposed to be reading this for a book club back in July. I had never got to it because of a lot of reasons. I would really like to actually get through it and like finish it though, even though I missed the discussion part of it. And then a couple of books that I'm just generally excited about and want to read. I finished Loveless earlier this month and so I've been on an Alice Oseman high and I kind of just want to read all of her books. So out of all the books that I own, the only one I haven't read, I was born for this. And then obviously there's like Nick and Charlie in this winter and stuff, but I don't have access to either of those right now because like I said, can't leave the room. When I do, I'm hoping to go to Waterstones and get Nick and Charlie and then I am going to pre-order this winter, I believe, for when it comes out in October, I want to say. I know this book has a trans character in it and like I love the different rep that Alice Oseman puts into her books, but uh, besides Elle in the Heartstopper comics, I haven't really read much about her writing trans characters, so I'm really excited to get to read this one. I also have Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I read Gideon last month and was obsessed, and this book came out earlier this month, and I've been hearing a lot of people screaming about it online, mostly just writing what the fuck over and over and over again because apparently it's like a kind of a mind fuck, but I'm really excited about reading it because I love Gideon. I think I love this one too. If I get through all of these books in the next 14 days, you should be very impressed with me because it's not a lot of books, but some of them are either really big or just really dense. And so, you know, I feel like I have a healthy amount of like books that I am trying to read. Anyway, the last book is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This isn't my copy. This is my friend's copy. He so generously lent it to me because like he bought it and read it when it came out, but he was like, I don't really want to reread it anytime soon. And I was like, I can buy my own copy, it's okay. And he's like, no, 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 just take it. I don't mind that much. So he let me bring it with me, which I'm really happy about because now I get to read it. The reason it looks so big is because this is a large print edition. So the text on the pages is huge. So it's like a thousand pages, but I think the original book is more of like 500, 600. That's the usual range for this series. Like I'm looking forward to reading this book. I think the only thing is, is that I struggle a little bit because I read City of Brass in 2017, or maybe it was 2018 and 2019. It's been over a year since I've read any of the books in this series. And so I'm worried that I'm just not going to remember enough for this to be as amazing as I know it's going to be. But like rereading this series is really daunting to me because reading it for the first time was already hard enough. Like this is one of those big adult fantasy books that just like is intimidating and scares me a lot. Yeah, this is the last book that I want to finish in these 14 days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I say eight books when we read because the reread is like, I read the book the first time in like four hours. And now that I know the story, it'll take me at least an hour less, I think. And like, honestly, looking at my book stacks, I'm like, oh, but maybe it'd be fun to read this one. Oh, maybe it'd be fun to read that one. Like, no, no, because no and no, you have enough. This vlog is looking like it's gonna be a really long one. So I'm gonna stop rambling and go to bed even though it's only 9.50. So a lot of times I like being tall. It's really great. I just like, I love being tall, but you know when it's not great to be tall? You can see me better than I can see me. Like, 
I can't, how, how do I, how do I do any, <laughs> what? Finished filming a video for you guys. It was like sort of a life update, what's been going on in my life sort of thing. And I genuinely don't think that I did a great job explaining everything, but I got everything out there, so you know. That was cool. Uh, go watch that if you haven't. I'll leave it linked. But I feel like in the video you couldn't really see my books because for one, the lighting, and for another, I just wasn't really paying that much attention to what the camera could see. There were just too many things in my brain. So I'm going to show you now. Once again, like the lighting's not going to be that great because obviously the light's coming this way through the window. So this is how they look. And see if I, if I come down here, is the lighting going to be better? Kind of. So you can see like these are my taller hardcovers. These are my sort of taller paperbacks. Oh, there we go. These are both my shorter hardcovers, and then these are my shorter paperbacks, but I wanted to like split them up a little. And then I have this one, this is like, this book is the bane of my existence. Because you can't tell from this angle, but this book is like slightly shorter than the other books. And it pains me because it just never looks good when I try to make them look like this, like in this nice like stack-ish sort of thing but it's on that end, so you guys won't see it that much, so it's fine. Well, I need to unpack everything else because I need to unpack. If I have to live out of a suitcase for another couple of days, I'm gonna scream. And like, I don't have anything else to do, so might as well. I don't think I'm gonna set up a time lapse. I don't know. I like time lapses, but like, I don't like making time lapses. <laughs> Maybe I'll make some later in the video, but I don't think I'm gonna make any today because I feel like unpacking is just so boring and I'm gonna be so focused on like, Unpacking and then also I'm definitely gonna be watching something so <laughs> Maybe I'll finally finish she Ra because I've been watching it for multiple months and I still haven't finished it. I'm sorry <laughs> One of my friends on Twitter was watching it the other day and she literally watched the entire five seasons in like a week And I've been watching it for at least two months now, and I'm still on season four so We end up watching YouTube videos because I've been really into watching people's vlogs recently so I should update you guys later today. I'm hoping to actually start a book today. I did start, where is it? I like kind of started The Death of Vivek OG yesterday, but I was really confused and like, I'm not sure I'm in the right headspace to read this sort of book. Oh my God, you're not gonna go back in, are you? I think that I might pick up and reread Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar before the book club discussion. I think it's tomorrow. That's my plans. I also really want to read The Extraordinaries because I don't know why, but it's weird. I consider myself a fan of TJ Klune, but I've read exactly one of his books. And so I feel like I need to read more of his books, especially his blacklisted titles, but like the ones that I own to actually consider myself a fan because I'm considering myself a fan off of The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I know isn't a complete representation of his writing style. So I own both Wolf Song and The Extraordinary, so I might read one of those. And then like I explained last night, I have the books that I actually need to get done, which aren't TJ Klune books, but you know, you never know. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later today or tomorrow if I don't feel like vlogging. <laughs>
a lot of the books that I pick up that are set in not a western country, so Africa, Asia, I think specifically literary fiction that's set in Africa and southwestern Asia or western Asia. I'm, I get the same vibes from every single time and maybe it's just the books that I picked up because I've only read I want to say three or four books from those areas. The ones I can think of off the top of my head are Americana which like is also set in the US but it is set in Nigeria as well so like I consider that also Africa. Oh that's uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and then the other one is I just forgot the title but I had to read it for AP Lit last year. It wasn't my favorite but it was better than some of the other ones we had to read. Like we had to read King Lear, which was like, sorry for you Shakespeare fans, but like, no. I can't remember what that book was called. Once again, maybe it's just the genre. Maybe it's the fact that I've only picked up two books, which shouldn't be a measure of vibe and stuff. And maybe it's the fact that they're both more literary fiction. I don't want to definitely say that they're literary fiction. I know that the book I read for AP Lit was, once again, like I just cannot remember what it's called. You know what? I have it written down somewhere, so I'm just gonna find it. The book that I was trying to think of is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy. I don't even know if I'm saying that name right. Um, it's 1020 and I'm using my phone to film, so I'm sorry, I can't look up how to say the name. But basically, each of these books has had a very similar vibe. And like, I feel like I'm repeating myself again, but I can't figure out if it's because they were all literary fiction, because I've only read three of them, or because of where they were set. But it's really intriguing. I like that this one is queer. The other two that I've read were not. I think they both had like very minor queer characters, but it's like being queer is sort of taboo in a lot of places, right? But I feel like in those countries especially. And I'm really curious to see how the rest of the story is going to unfold. I'm only on page 68, 69. I'm gonna say 68 because 69, no thank you. And yeah, like, okay, like I said, it's like 10.30 at night. I had a really productive day today. As you guys saw, I put in some time lapses of me taking photos of bookmarks for my Etsy shop, which is always linked in the description. So if you wanna go check it out, that'd be really great. I'd be I'd be really appreciative. I will update you guys tomorrow or if I finish this book tonight, I'll talk about it more. Really quickly, I just got to like literally the next page of my book and I said in my last clip that being queer in those areas, specifically like anywhere but the West, even in the West, but like was like taboo, which is like, yeah, that's how it is in places like Alabama and like, you know, you can go to conversion therapy and you can possibly get killed. But here it's literally like, if someone misunderstands, if they think he's a homosexual, what do you think is going to happen to him? Vivek couldn't end up like those lynched bodies at the junction, blackened by fire and stiffened, large gases from machetes showing old red flesh underneath. More than just taboo. It's... Today's Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday, my dudes. And it's like almost 3.45 in the afternoon. I've had a weird day. It's just that switching time zones is hard, especially when it's like a big switch. Those of you who've done that, you know and i always take a couple of days to get adjusted at the new time zone so like last night i didn't go to bed until midnight and then i woke up today at like 11 so i love that for me we're gonna try not to do that again tonight but honestly you never know i've been having laptop struggles for eons i used to edit my videos on my laptop and i just kept having problems and like it just kept glitching and all that stuff so I started editing them on the family mac that was in my room when my laptop like screen broke back in May and I just kept editing them on there because it was just easier like the desktop just worked better so I just kept doing that and then obviously now I don't have it I only have my laptop and so I had to go back and figure out why iMovie wasn't working and then I was having trouble for some reason um, importing my footage into iMovie to edit it, which was a struggle. And I really have been trying to get a new editing software because I'm not a super huge fan of iMovie. I think it works as a beginner, especially if you have an Apple device that already has iMovie as a preset, but I really want to do more intricate things with my editing that I can't do on iMovie or that I haven't figured out how to do. And honestly, like I don't want to take the time to learn how to do because I'm sure it's going to be some random bullshit thing that Apple has made up. But I, for some reason, can't download the app that I am trying to get to edit my stuff with. So that's been a fun struggle. It's an Adobe app. I really need to call the help center, but calling people so yeah, but I finally did get my video edited 
It's shorter than I meant for it to be, but my camera battery died in the middle of the video, so like there wasn't much I could do about that. And yeah, I've just been having kind of a weird, like kind of an off day just because I think I got started today a lot later than I meant to. I am still planning on finishing my book today, The Death of Vivek Oji. I'm currently on page 180 out of 248. So I only really have like 70 pages left. I can definitely finish that today. And then I'm hoping to start, oh frick, what's it called? There's a book I have to read for an author interview that I'm doing. It's called Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I've heard a couple of my friends on Instagram talk about it. But basically the author reached out to a blog that I write for the asexual agenda. Is that what it's called? Why did I just forget what it's called? So me and one other person who also writes for this is, are going to read the book and then have an interview with the author and talk about it basically. And I meant to read it like two weeks ago, but that still hasn't happened. The thing is, is that it's more of a nonfiction like description e book than I'm used to. I'm more of a fantasy reader, as you guys probably know, like I prefer fiction, so this book is probably gonna be hard for me to get through, I know that, but like I do want to get through it, so you know, hopefully I can get there eventually. And yeah, I don't really have any plans for the rest of the day. Before this clip starts really quick, I gotta let you guys know that I do talk a lot about homophobia, suicide, and being murdered for being queer, specifically being gay. And I just wanted to mention that as a content warning for some people because I'd like to think that I talked about it in a sensitive way, in a way that isn't harmful or anything like that, but I know that I'm only one person and that there's a whole world of experiences out there. So I just thought that I should put this in here because I don't want the next eight-ish minutes to affect your life in a bad way, I guess. I'll put a timestamp for where you can skip to to miss me talking about all of that stuff and I will talk about the book that I talk about during that stuff in my wrap-up and I'll try to talk less about that sort of stuff in my wrap-up so you can actually hear me talk about it and I will before I talk about that book talk about content warnings so you guys can hear about the content warnings specifically for that book before you think about picking it up. That's all, get back to the video. I feel the lighting's really bad and I'm really sorry to any of you who can't see me right now but I didn't know how else to prop up my phone, so. It's Tuesday night and I felt like I should update again. I don't know why I keep feeling like I should update every five seconds. I guess that's good, because then I know I have a lot of footage for my vlog, but also like, at this point, I think I'm gonna have to make a vlog for each week of quarantine instead of a whole vlog for the two weeks of quarantine, because I honestly right now think I have like 30 minutes of footage and it's literally day three, so. Day two. Today's Wednesday. I got here on Monday. So technically day three? I don't know. It's been two 24 hour periods since I got here, but it's day three. I don't know if that makes sense. It, oh yeah, it's also like almost nine and I'm currently trying to decide if I should pick up another book or not. Because earlier today I finished The Death of Vivek Oji and I was deceased. I'll talk about it more when I do my wrap up which will be soon because it's almost the end of the month, but I cried. This book somehow means the world to me, even though the characters are nothing like me. I've been meaning to make a discussion video about representation for a really long time because I know that representation is a thing that's been talked about a lot, especially with the rise of people trying to read more books by POC authors. And like, that's never really been an issue for me. I've been more aware of the fact that I need to read more POC authors, but I've never, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, yeah, I pick up POC authors, but in the past it was just, oh, their book sounds interesting. And now I'm actually conscious of the fact that I want to make my reading more broad. And I've, it's the same with LGBTQ plus books. When I was like 15, 16, I would literally go to the library, pick up a book and be like, mm, this looks good, guess I'll read it. And now it's like, I, I actively seek out books that are either by POC or LGBTQ plus authors or about either of those topics, which like usually if they're about that, the author is a person of color or LGBTQ plus, but you never know. But I think that in the, I guess, period, especially after Pride Month, after a lot of the stuff that happened during the month of June, people are a lot more conscious of picking up LGBTQ plus books and books by POC authors. I don't know why I just went on that tangent. Basically, I just want to talk about the fact that I don't know why it's such a big deal. But not that I don't know why it's such a big deal we should pick up those authors. I don't know why it's such a big deal to some people that like 
reading books like that is so hard for them. But I promise, like I said, I'm going to make a video and I promise I'll try to be more eloquent in that video. So yeah, this book was amazing. I've had to read books similar to this for school. And because of that, I really hope that this book ends up being taught for school curriculums. I don't think it could be inserted for the books that I had to read for school that remind me of this but I hope that eventually it's put into school curriculums, especially in the US, because not only does it talk about people from Africa just living their lives, which isn't a thing that we learn a lot about in the US. I think a lot of times in the US we see the bad things, the droughts and the refugees and the wars and the civil unrest. And we don't get to see a lot of the idea that cities exist, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, okay, we know that cities exist in Africa. We all know that. But it's different to read it from an author's perspective of someone I believe who's lived there. I'm not entirely sure, but I think that Akwe Kiyomezi was born there. I love it when the author biography doesn't have anything about like their background, where they grew up or anything like that, but just has an insane list of the amount of awards that they've won. Because like, go off, flex on the rest of us, you know? It's fine. The main other book that I reference when I talk about books that I had to read that were similar to this in high school was Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who I believe also was born or lived at some point in Africa. And like, I don't know, this book is just so profound and I think that it really captures the feeling of living in a place where being queer just isn't acceptable at all. And it's like, because I've lived in places that are so accepting my whole life, it never has felt like being queer was something that anyone or I could be killed over, but especially reading books like this. I feel like reading a book like this is different than reading a book that's set in the US that's about homophobia or transphobia, because in the US a lot of times it talks about internalized homophobia and transphobia, whether that's your own or something that's forced upon you. Like specifically here, I'm thinking of The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth, because that book specifically talks about conversion therapy and stuff like that. And like, in that book, it never felt like the main character would be killed by the people around her for being queer. It sounded like something like conversion therapy would drive her or other people around her to do something like kill themselves. And so I think a lot of the times in the US we see suicide rates, like we see the higher suicide rates of LGBTQ plus people. I feel like people aren't killed as much for being queer in the US and it's a very real possibility in this book and in other in countries in the world basically. And so it's like, yeah, that I'm not saying that experiencing homophobia in the US never happens because obviously it does. I'm saying that it's very different in this book and in other countries in the world. And that was really interesting. Hello, editing me here to explain. I feel like in this clip, I didn't really explain it eloquently enough for you guys to understand what I was talking about. Basically what I was trying to say is that in the US, people hardly ever get killed for looking gay like hate crime killed, not like stuff like committing suicide. I'm aware that trans people get killed all the time for being trans for looking like they are trans people. That's not what I'm referring to here. I'm specifically referring to looking gay because that's what the main focus of the book is on, especially for victims of hate crimes. I love how I said I wasn't going to talk about that book that much and I just talked about it for eight minutes. So mm, love that for me. Probably wasn't actually eight minutes, but you know. Oh, and then I actually also just finished Love Creek Wood by Becky Albertalli, which is like the opposite end of the queer book spectrum from the death of Vivek Oji, because in that book I was literally talking about like queer people being murdered for being or looking queer. And this book is literally about a bunch of queer people being sad that they're not going to the same university, which is like, <laughs> and it's, a, oh my God. If you were a fan of Simon o versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and uh, like all of Becky Albertalli's books and like watch the movie, if you've seen Love, Victor, like all that stuff, and you haven't picked this book up, I don't know what you're doing. Because like I get being like, okay, yeah, I liked Simon when it first came out, but I'm sort of done with it now. Like I get it, I'm not. But if you're a fan of anything else and or you reread or rewatch the movie constantly, please read this book because it gave me all the feels and I literally rewatched Love, Simon like a week ago and I already want to reread it or rewatch it, so. Also, this book is really fast to get through because it's mostly written in emails and it's just really cute. It's just so, it's so cute. I laughed out loud. I screamed. I got up off of my bed and started jumping around the room because that's what I do when I cannot take what a book is doing to me. Yeah. And it's interesting how not 
super in-depthly, but it also sort of touches on other stuff like long distance relationships and figuring out university and how that works for each individual person. Like I've had struggles with that and I think that reading those struggles to an extent in this book, like I said, it's written in emails so you don't get to see everything because the characters also talk about texting each other, calling each other, FaceTiming each other, and then, you know, obviously they're still going about their days and we don't get to see that firsthand the way we would in like a different sort of novel, but still seeing secondhand experiences from this book was like really impactful to me, so. <laughs> now I'm struggling with what to read next because my problem right now is that I do have books that I need to read and for different reasons. I have Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Basherduced, which I need to read by the end of the month for a book club. For some reason, I just can't get myself to pick up. I don't know why. Like, it's not that long. It's sapphic. Like, it looks really good, but for some reason, I just can't get myself to pick it up. I have Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Shackerbordy. I am borrowing this from a friend. He really wants me to read it. Like, not really as much as some of the other books he's lent me, but like, he does want to see me read it you know, eventually. And I feel like I do really want to read it, obviously, but you know, like it's here. And then the other book that I really need to read, and I don't remember the exact full title because it's a long ass title, but the book is shortened. It's just called Ace. And then there's like, what asexual, like there's a bunch of stuff and it's by Angela Chen. I'm supposed to be doing an interview with the author and stuff. Like I talked about earlier today, it's kind of hard to do an interview with an author if you haven't read their book. So I kind of need to read it. I don't know why I can't muster the motivation to read any of the books I just mentioned. I'm kind of worried that like, I'm just not reaching for fantasies right now. I think which is why I haven't read Girl Serpent Thorn or Empire of Gold. All I really want to do right now is read some of the contemporaries that I have. And like, I know that's what I should just do. I don't know why, but I feel so bad picking up one of the contemporaries that I have on my TBR over a book that like, I'm really meaning to read this month or a book that isn't even mine that my friend literally let me take to the UK not knowing when I would come back to the US, but let me take it anyways. Like, I just, I don't know. And then like, I look at my books and I'm like, well, I don't know, do I really wanna read any of these? And then I feel like a horrible person and we're not gonna go into this because that's, but like, I don't know, maybe I wanna read King of the Dragonflies. Maybe I wanna read like a cute, short middle grade. I don't know. And then like, I'll hear someone talk about a book online somewhere on YouTube or Twitter. Like I'll watch YouTube videos, I'll be scrolling on Twitter or I'll see someone's Instagram post. And I'm like, oh my God, I would love to read that book. Like, and I have it, it's literally right there. Why am I not reading it? And then I don't pick it up, I'm struggling. Yeah, I just don't know whether I should try to force myself to read or not. I suppose I shouldn't, but I also, I hate it. I hate it when I sit on my bed watching YouTube videos all day, it's horrible. But like, I don't have anything else to do besides read, so like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. There's obviously some deeper brain thing that just... That's how we're doing. That ended up being a lot sadder than I wanted it to be. But I'm really happy because I finished two books today. I was really hoping that these two weeks would help me get back on track with my Goodreads reading goal because I'm four books behind right now, I think. But my initial goal was 100 books and the next book I start reading will be book number 94. So like, I'm doing pretty good. But I also changed the goal to 150 books because I was like, I bet I can do what I've been reading a lot recently. I, just did, I did it at the end of June, which is like, you guys saw the fact that my June wrap up was a million books long. So like, then it felt reasonable. Now it's like, uh, I don't know if I can actually do this. I'm considering it more of a stretch goal because I'm obviously gonna hit 100 books by the end of the year. And obviously again, like 150, that also depends on my university workload and like a lot of other factors after I move into my house. like jobs and extra extracurriculars and stuff, but I think I can do it. I only have like 60 books to read and I read 60 books about in this period last year. So like, you'd think I could do it. We'll see. New day, same angle. It's Thursday morning, the 27th of August. I'm currently trying to upload a video, but the Wi-Fi here is like, it's not horrible, but sometimes it does glitch a little bit especially when there's like a lot of people on it. So it said that I have 12 minutes left for at least 15 minutes now. I'm really hoping I can actually get it up. It's not a very long video, which doesn't bode well for the other videos I'm planning to make because yeah, I think this one's 11 minutes, so I'm not gonna be that short because we all know my videos aren't short. So <laughs> love that for me. I've been struggling a lot with my hair recently because 
I've never had my hair this well I have when I was like a baby, but I've basically had my hair at least like chin-ish length or longer for most of my life until I cut it recently. And I do not know how to get to do what I want. <laughs> like when it was long, I would just pull it back and it wasn't that big of a deal as long as it was out of my face, it didn't matter. But when it's like this length, like, I don't know, I don't want it to look bad, but like it always just does this and I... And then I feel like I look like a TikTok fuckboy and I'm just gonna be like, ah. So, you know, that's fun. I should probably buy myself some hair gel or something so I can actually make my hair do what I want. I still haven't picked a book to read. I continue to go back and forth on what I wanna do. I think that I'm gonna try to read some chapters of the ebook that I need to read before the author interview I'm doing, but it's just hard for me to get myself to read it because it, I'm not reading it for pleasure, I'm reading it to do something with the author, which shouldn't be a reason for me not to want to read a book, and it's not. Like, I, I wouldn't have said yes to doing an author interview and like getting an arc of this book if I wasn't interested in the book, but it is nonfiction, which isn't something that I read a lot. The reason that I'm interested in it is because it's about asexuality and that's always something that I'm curious to learn more about. And I do know some of my friends on Bookstagram really enjoyed the book because I know they got an arc of it from NetGalley, I think. After this video is uploaded, I'm definitely gonna have to pick a book. Maybe I should do an Instagram poll. Those never go well for me though because I don't have enough followers on Instagram. If you guys want to follow me on Instagram, the link is in my description as always. I did hit 500 followers recently, which is really great, but Instagram's algorithm has been doing some weird stuff recently and my last post did not do as well as I'm used to. I hate that. I hate algorithms because they never work well for small creators and like I am nothing if not a small creator. And I keep looking at my books and keep going, oh maybe that one, oh maybe that one, oh maybe that one, oh maybe that one, and I know that I'm just being indecisive but it's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. My video is now 70% uploaded but it still says 12 minutes remaining so love that for me. Maybe I'll pick up one of the middle grade books that I have because I know I read middle grade really fast and I've been kind of wanting to read. I mean, I've been wanting to read the middle grade that I have specifically for a while, but generally I've been wanting to read shorter, more upbeat books. I'm like, okay, all of my middle grades are about queer people, so they're not going to be the most upbeat in the entire world, I don't think. But like, middle grades just have this wholesome quality to them that you just can't shake no matter how serious your topic is, I think. As far as I've experienced, I think because little kids don't want to read a book and come out of it feeling sad, you know? As do none of us, but I just want this video to be uploaded. <laughs> Guys, we're so close. We have literally two minutes. Like, <laughs> come on, you can do it. So I just started uploading all of my vlog footage to my computer so that I could just like suss out how much I have and how much I need to slow the fuck down. And I haven't uploaded all of the footage I still have. Oh god, 25 minutes worth of footage to put in the project. And we're already at 48 minutes. It's just like, why, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I making my job 10 times harder by filming a clip every other second of every single day?